OSHA requires operators of forklifts to be trained per OSHA 1910-178L for industry and construction. The employer of the employee using the forklift is responsible for verifying that the operator is qualified as per OSHA and ANSI ASME definition. Qualified means one who by possession of a recognized degree, certificate, or professional standing, or who by extensive knowledge, training, and experience has successfully demonstrated his or her ability to solve or resolve problems related to the subject matter, the work, or the project. The observers of this video understand that this video is not training and that training consists of classroom and hands-on evaluation by a qualified trainer. Always read and understand the operator's manual for the equipment you are operating. Pre-start inspection for a telehandler forklift. First, read the operator's manual to find out exactly what to check on the forklift you'll be operating. Always wear the appropriate PPE, personal protective equipment, gloves, safety glasses, hard hat, and steel-toed work boots. Get training. OSHA requires training on forklifts. Remove the key before doing your pre-start check. Open the engine compartment to check engine components and check the oil. Check battery connections and other engine components. Start your walk around inspection. Look at the ID plate. Check load capacity. Check the weight of the forklift. This forklift has a maximum capacity of 10,000 pounds and weighs 29,430 pounds. Check hydraulic cylinders and lines for leaks. Check for damage inside and outside the wheels. Check tires, wheels and lug nuts. Check what kind of fuel it takes and check the fuel level. Visually inspect the ROPS canopy. Check tires, wheels, and lug nuts. Check the boom angle indicator. Fork carriage inspection. The fork shall be carefully examined for the following. Surface cracks, straightness of blade and shank, fork angle from upper face of blade to load face of shank, relative height of fork tips and set, operation of position lock, wear not more than 10% of shank, fit of fork arm mounting hooks or eye, markings shall be legible, and do not operate a forklift that has damaged or worn forks. Continuing your walk around inspection around the opposite side of the forklift. Check the carriage lock pin and pin keeper. Make sure it's there and properly inserted. 
check the fork carriage ID plate. Make sure it's equal to or greater than the capacity of the forklift you're operating. Check tires, wheels, and lug nuts. Check mirrors and all glass. None of it can be cracked or broken. Look underneath the forklift, check for leaks, hoses, or anything hanging underneath the forklift. Three and four points of contact getting on the forklift and into the seat. Adjust the seat, check and fasten your seat belt. Before starting, make sure the brake is set and the gear shifter is in neutral. Check the brakes, forwards and backwards. Check and make sure the backup alarm is working. Check fork controls. Note, read and heed all hazard labels. Check frame tilt and level. Check outriggers and outrigger cutouts if applicable. Raise the boom, extend the boom, and observe tracking. Return the boom to the stowed position before picking up the outriggers. Check the load chart. Note, with outriggers down, the capacity ranges from 10,000 pounds to 3,000 pounds at full extension. Without riggers up, capacity ranges from 10,000 pounds 
and quickly drops off to 300 pounds at full extension. It's always best to use the outriggers. When shutting down the forklift, point the forks down to the ground, set the parking brake, make sure the gear selector is in neutral, let the engine idle for two minutes, then turn the key off and take the key out of the machine. Exit by maintaining three and four points of contact while getting off the machine facing the machine. Danger, if anything is not working properly, red tag the forklift and take the key. Notify your supervisor, call a technician. Pre-start inspection review. Read the operator's manual. Check operating and emergency controls, safety devices and brakes, personal protective devices, air, hydraulic and fuel system leaks, cables and wiring, loose and missing parts, tires, wheels and lug nuts, placards, warnings, control markings and manuals, ROPS canopy, forks and fork carriage, and any other items as specified by the manufacturer. Do not operate a forklift that is not operating properly.